Notice certain cycles, repetitive situations that you don't like. And it's stealing your joy. You need to, to lay it off. Because it has been designed to cause you not to possess your inheritance. Whoever you are, wherever you're watching us from, you're welcome to Beacon Life Church in Nairobi, Kenya. We are committed to shining Jesus' light as we advance the glorious gospel of the kingdom. Our services are on Sunday, 10 a.m., Power Thursday, which is also our midweek prayer service at 6 p.m. You're welcome to log into our life groups, Beacon at Home, Beacon at Work. Don't you hesitate to get in touch with us for the details of the life group that is closest to you. Feel excited to join us on our social media handles to subscribe, like, comment, and follow Beacon Life Church on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Let's now celebrate the Lord with our generous giving. The Mpesa Pay Bill number is 535471. You can also give through PayPal by following the link on our website, www.beaconlifechurch.org. For cash, checks, and transfers, our bank details are displayed on the screen. Thanks a bunch for joining us today. Welcome to Beacon Life Church. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the service. Alright. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, we are written for our learning. That we that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. He was talking about Back in the old days, the stories we read back in the Old Testament, they were all written in account for our learning. Imagine God is concerned in our learning. So whatever we're going to look at here is just for our learning. Amen. Amen. All right. So I will start with Obadiah. Chapter 1. From verse 16. Remember we are reading this together, okay? Obadiah. Uh, this was the vision of Obadiah. He was talking about the likes of Esau, the likes of Edom, and what shall happen, and their inheritance shall be possessed by other people, and it's a subject which you can Look into in detail in your private time. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yeah. They shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. My emphasis will be from 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Just take a look at 17. He says, Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. I want you to notice the flow of the context. There shall be first deliverance. And there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. It's amazing how the flow is going because there is a possession which is about to take place. But he says, First, there shall be deliverance. And once the deliverance is done, there shall be holiness. You know, it's impossible to maintain holiness if there is no deliverance. And you know, You 
have to be delivered from certain things in order to have the grace to maintain holiness. And as a result, there will be possession. Amen. The end result is possession. But first, there must be deliverance. And then, there must be a pattern of holiness. Amen. Remember the verse which says, without holiness, none shall see God. You remember that? Without holiness, none shall see God. And remember, without holiness, we shall not post. You know, God is our precious possession. And he's letting us know without walking in holiness, we shall not possess him. Huh? My someone will be brief. <laughs> All right. Let's look at Hebrews twelve one. Remember, we are looking at it together. Eh? We are learning. These things were written for our learning. We are learning. He says this. Wherefore, seeing, remember the book of Hebrews, up to now we don't know who actually wrote it. We assume it's Paul. Maybe it's John. Maybe it's, but we are not sure. But it's, someone who is a Jew because he is associating himself with the Jews. He, he calls them our ancestors, so he must be a Jew. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We need to lay aside every weight. Remember, we are looking at the term holiness. I won't describe it in detail because I know you know it. You know, you know what it means. So I'll just briefly, we'll just briefly look at it. So he's letting us know that there is a weight which we need to lay aside. We need to lay aside a particular weight and sin which easily ensnares us. You know, he says, let's, let us, it's a choice. It's a choice that we are given. It is a choice. To lay aside. It is a choice. Remember, <laughs> in the book of Judges, can we read it? I, 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 we are reading it together. The book of Judges, chapter 16, verse 1. And we'll see from the past and we learn together the things we need to lay off. Look at, this is Samson, the mighty man, Samson. Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there and oh, the kids have gone and saw there an harlot and went into her. Next. Can we go next? Huh? And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither, and they compassed him in and laid 
wait for him all night in the gate of the city and we are quiet all the night saying in the morning when it's day we shall kill him you see this was not the first time it had become a pattern remember samson has been delivered has been anointed for this task he had been called into ministry not ministry of the word, obviously. But he was called by God to do particular functions. But now, there was a pattern which there was a weight which was not laid down. And as a result, now the enemy instead had to lay in wait for him because his resistance to lay out the weight brought him trouble. Amen. And eventually, whether it was premature or not, according to the mercy of God, he almost didn't possess what he was called to. It was actually God's mercy at the end. So the the choice of not laying the weight, laying out the weight, almost costed him his possession. Amen. Is it making sense? A lot. <laughs> so Hebrews tells us we need to lay aside every weight. Every weight. And remember, when he's saying this, he's not talking to the Gentiles. He's not talking to the unbelievers. He's talking to the people who are called by God, who has been delivered, who has been filled with the Holy Ghost. He's talking to people who know God. But because it's a choice. We can serve God and still carry weight. You see, if the weight is not dealt with, it becomes easier to sin. The weight makes it easier to sin. And there are weights that the Lord desires for us to be delivered from. Because remember the, the opening verse, he said, there shall be deliverance and then holiness and then possession. God really wants you to possess what he has in store for you. But it's upon choice. It's upon choice. And there are weights that the Lord wants us to be delivered from so that the spirit man can be elevated. Your spirit man. I can see an elevation happening. An elevation of your spirit man. And it will be more effective if you let you 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 you, you let how can I put it? Huh? If you lay down some weights, imagine Kipchoge goes to the Olympics and they are the, on the on the front line, they're about to, to start jogging with the rest of the guys, competitors. And he decides to put on a backpack and wear gumboots and put on a helmet and put on a jacket, a, those raincoat jackets. The officials will say, hey, man, you, know, you are a legend, but can you just put the backpack down because it might hinder your victory? Hmm? Remember, it's a race. 
and we must be diligent in that race. I saw, uh, the other time I saw something, I had questions about a few things and I was looking at the story of the tabernacle <laughs> and it's, you know, those subjects which you don't want to study. You rather hear it from someone else. And I was looking at it, the tabernacle, how it was designed, how it was partitioned, the outer court, the inner court, the holy of holies. Remember the prophet uh, Zacharias, John the Baptist's dad, hmm? when the Lord was cast and it was his turn to go in and minister, he had to go into the holy of holies and the rest of the people were outside waiting. Outside waiting. You know, not everyone, not everyone will be in there. And I was, I didn't see it before, but God spoke from the Holy of Holies. He never spoke from the outer court. He never spoke from the inner court. And those are the places where the multitudes were. He only spoke in the Holy of Holies and only the high priest was there. Only the high priest was there. And I thought about it. And I, I discovered the tabernacle is a representation. The outer court represents your body. The inner court represents the realm of the soul, the mind, the will, the emotions. The holy of holies represents your spirit. And that is where the Lord usually spoke from. Remember, we are looking at this for our own learning. It was written for our learning. God only spoke from the holy of holies which represents your spirit. That's why it's important and vital for you to learn and learn to hear God from within your spirit because that's where he speaks, from the holy place. Your spirit is uncorruptible. Your spirit is pure. You have been delivered. You are one with Christ. One with Christ. In the spirit, not the soul, the inner court. Because we find out it's true because he said we have to renew the mind. That's the territory of the soul. Yeah? So, yeah? Pastor, we'll talk at Java. So, it's important to hear from God. From we, we learn to hear because that's where he speaks from. I remember Pastor D always tells us, learn to listen from God from within. It didn't make sense until I stumbled upon these few things and, and I remembered what he's, he, he, say, he told us. Learn to hear from God from within. He can speak from without, but... From within, that's where he dwells. And I had questions after reading all this. I questioned myself. Because we see a lot of things and, and, and you know, to the point, and this debate has been going on for ages. People are questioning, eh? Can a believer be demon possessed? Yeah? Yeah? And 
I wondered, but, but Lord, see, if I am one with you and you are one with me, then why? How, 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 how comes? But remember, in the Holy of Holies, which represents your spirit, that, that is the place where God dwells. And God cannot dwell with a third party spirit. But now, there is an issue now. The soul, the inner court, not the outer court, the body, the inner court, the soul realm, the mind, the will, the emotions, that's where attachments come from. Timothy was told, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. A spirit of fear cannot survive in the spirit realm, in the, in, in the innermost holy place. But what it can do is this. It will attach, for instance, let's say, Mm. let's say um, I am full of rage, anger. You know, it's a spirit. Just like fear is a spirit, rage, anger is a spirit. But now, also anger is an emotion. And an emotion is at the realm of the soul. And because that emotion cannot overcome the spirit, it will attach itself to the soul. It becomes a weight. Remember we are talking about laying off a weight. Let me take a detour to John 5, 6 to 4. 6 to 14, sorry. John 5, 6 to 14. We are reading together. We are learning, eh? This was the man, you, re you know this story already. The man who was healed of an infirmity at the pool of Bethsaida. And this person stayed there for 38 years. 38 years. 38 years. When you read about 38 years in a book, it's quite easy. It doesn't make much sense, but once you live for 38 years, you will understand what this means. This guy was laying in the bed beside the pool for 38 years. 38 years. Most many... People here are not even 35. But this guy, no, no, please, please forgive me for that. Eh? But not offensive, but no offenses. Eh? But this guy was laying, waiting for the pool to be stirred up by the angel for 38 years. And now Jesus saw him. He saw him lying and knew that he had been now for a long time in that case. He said to him, Thou Will thou be made whole? The important man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. Next, next guys, please. But while I'm coming, another step is down before me. So everybody was just waiting. Jesus said to him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. On the same day, it was a Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him, that was cured. It is the Sabbath, man. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, 
He that made me whole, the same said unto me, take up thy bed. I don't know why he told him to take up the bed. A mattress which has been slept on for 38 years. Then asked they him, what man is that which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed was not who it was. He didn't know who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away. Uh -huh. A multitude being in that place. Now, my point of focus is on 14. Remember, we are talking about deliverance, holiness, and possession. We can't possess without being delivered. We can't possess without walking in holiness. After Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worst thing come unto thee. Why did he tell him that? Sin no more. He could have said, give praise to God and continue with thy endeavors. But he said, sin no more. He said, in other words, he said, lay aside every weight now. You have been delivered. Now, because God wants you to possess something, now, please, sin no more. Walk in holiness. Make a choice to walk in the pattern of holiness because if you don't, a worse thing come unto thee. A worse thing. What is what? What can be worse than missing out on the prized possession, which is Abba Father? That is worse. And Jesus knew it, and and he knew if he didn't make a choice, he will miss the ultimate possession. Which will be the worst thing. I told you my summer will be short. Eh? So, there are ways that the Lord desires for us to be delivered from. So that the spirit man can be elevated. I see an elevation taking place in your life. An elevation. Elevation. And it will begin from your spirit, from your inner man, from the holy place where God dwells. Notice certain cycles, repetitive situations that you don't like. Notice them. The first step is just notice them. Notice a cycle which you don't like. And it's repetitive. And it's stealing your joy. You need to, to lay it off. Because it has been designed to cause you not to possess your inheritance. Let us look at one example. I think the last one. Let me just put it the last one. Eh? Because if I continue, it will become too much. First Kings 11. It's a story of the mighty King Solomon. We all know him, the wisest man. And he was so blessed. The son of King David. A chosen generation. But King Solomon loved many strange women, foreign, foreign, from different languages, Egyptian, Ethiopians. I mean, Solomon was not racist. <laughs> Most of you here are very racist, but not Solomon. <laughs> he was not tribalistic. 
Aya. Strange women, foreign, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, who was his wife. Women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidionites, Hittites, Tamites. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Please, please, please. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. He had uh, Solomon was a heavy weight lifter. Uh, seven. I, 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 I. Wow. That is such a weight to carry. Such a weight. Such a weight. I mean, the joy of the Lord is your strength. An extra weight cannot add joy to your life. At all. So as I wind up, I don't want to say much because it's just a brief, a brief thing. And I felt in my heart that this book of Obadiah, Obadiah, give me, a, let's see, a, let's, see let, let's look at Obadiah again one more time. Deliverance, holiness, possession. We can't possess if we don't walk in holiness. And once we have been delivered, we don't need to be delivered again. Because we can decide to make a choice which will cause us to possess with much ease even when there is plenty of opposition. God will make sure you possess as long as you walk in holiness. Amen. I think I should not push it further than that because I will ruin it. Let me keep it brief because I don't have m my own words to add to it. I thought about these things when I was back out there in the village and I had lots of questions. And I turn on my laptop and I see Pastor D preaching about a new season. Oh, I said, wow. So, you are possessing something in this new season. And God really wants you to be in order. He wants you not to miss it this time. He wants you to achieve everything he planned for you. Heavenly Father, I give you thanks. I bless you, Father, because you are good all the time. Father, thank you for your people. Thank you for this word and this season. Thank you because you are ensuring that we do not miss out. Thank you that your plan, your plans your purposes of our lives are yes and amen. Father, none of us shall be left behind in this new season. I speak a special grace over your people that 
they will conquer every opposition, every snare, every weapon, shall not be able to prosper because the greater one lives in them. The greater one resides in them. King of glory, I thank you for you have delivered us. Thank you that you are our righteousness. Thank you that our holiness comes from you. Thank you, Father, for this word. We receive it today. We will choose this day to lay aside every weight and every sin that easily entangles us. We refuse to be entangled in mess. We set our eyes on the possession. Jesus, you are our prized possession. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I give you thanks.